Now, for your quiz, you admitted an amazing fact to us that when you were nine, you won a newspaper quiz that was about Gilbert and Sullivan. Yes, Art phoned me up and um, asked me strange personal questions. <laughs> and somewhere in there, I have no idea how it, how it came out, uh, I, I admitted to having the only competition I have ever won in my life. Um, apart from getting three questions right on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. <laughs> um, but they were true or false, and God, they were easy. Uh, was actually, at the age of nine, winning the Gilbert and Sullivan competition in the local newspaper in Sussex, England. That's a, what did you get? What was your prize? My prize was two tickets to a local production of Patience. Ah. Um, in the local school, and I went along, and being a snotty little nine-year-old, I, I was not terribly impressed with the production. It wasn't up to... <laughs> they were like, two stars, by the way, yeah. two stars. All right, we'll see how much you remember about 19th century operettas. <laughs> now, if you get enough questions right here, Rebecca Miller of Louisville, Texas, is going to get an Ask Me Another Anagram t-shirt. You winning is there going to give stakes. someone else a prize. That's right. We're going to have to let Rebecca know one way or the other. I'm sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with a little musical clue here. I'm going to replace some words from what is probably the most famous Gilbert and Sullivan song, the Major General song. Your job is to sing the correct lyrics. Oh, dear God. <laughs> hang on. Uh, hang, hang, hang on. You, did, you, you used the word sing there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever approximates that for you in your world, you can, you can mumble them or, or uh, it's fine. I'm not going to hold I'll you, I'm not going to judge you when you're singing, just your correctness. Okay, go for it. All right. I know our mythic history, King Arthur's answer caradox. I answer hard acrostics, I have a pretty taste for paradox. I quote in elegiacs all the crimes of Heliogabalus. In conics, I can floor peculiarities parabolus. I can tell undoubted Raphael's from Gerard and Zophanes. I know the croaking chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a fugue of which I've heard the music's dinner for. And whistle all the airs from that TV show, Mary Tyler Moore. And whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense, pin a four. Yeah! <laughs> Lovely. And just to be clear, but all the rest of the words, those were the original words? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Wow, uh... In 1881, Gilbert and Sullivan's manager, Richard Oily Cart, built the Savoy Theatre in London to showcase the dynamic duo's operas. An interesting fact about the Savoy is that it was the first public building in the world to be lit entirely by what? Electric lights. That is it correct. was the very first building ever to have electric lights. And all of that for theater. Yes. And, uh, and it was actually, technically, it's doily cart doily rather cart? than oily cart. Oh, Richard. I'm sure the oily cart was what his enemies called him. <laughs> oh, yes, there's oily cart. Uh, yeah. Doily cart. Doily right, that cart, sounds yeah. much more uh, posh. Yeah, right, upper crust. Yeah. Oily cart sounds like, yeah, he wasn't doing so well. Yeah, you'd sort of want to wipe him off your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is another musical clue. We have changed some more lyrics, this time from a song called I'm Called Little Buttercup. So just sing us, sing us the original phrase. I've treacle and toffee, I've tea and I've coffee, soft tommy and succulent chops. I've chickens and conies and pretty polonies and excellent jello pudding pops. I don't know. I'm doomed. You not doomed? <laughs> you are doomed. You will now be murdered, I'm sorry to say. Now I will be sent to the place where people who don't know questions go and <laughs> the hook will go into my neck and the blood will spill and... <laughs> People what if will I, eat me in cans. What, what if I told you uh, it was uh, an excellent something representing a, a, maybe a red and white candy? Uh, lollipops? Oh, that's no. a good rhyme, too. But no, that's no, incorrect. Uh, uh, red and white candy. Yeah. Like the little stripey? Little stripey, little round stripey candies, yeah. 
Uh, forget it. You're fired. Who yeah, knows the uh, answer? Anybody know the answer? Peppermint drops is what Peppermint we're drops, of course. And just so you know, the place that people go to, that they don't get the... It's called um, a bar. <laughs> right. So you're fine. <laughs> Where you get the hook into yeah, your Yeah, yeah, well, there's that, there's that, there's that. But you're at a bar, but so you're it's at like you're at a bar. It's, it's great. Fun. A line from the song A More Humane Mikado has become a popular turn of phrase. Another form of this phrase is the cliche, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. What lyric completes the line, my object all sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the... Punishment fit the crime. Exactly. <laughs> You're on a roll. <laughs> William Rehnquist, the former Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, was a big Gilbert and Sullivan fan. And in 1995, he added four gold stripes to the sleeves of his judge robe. I didn't know you could just do that. <laughs> but he was copying the costume of Lord Chancellor from a local production of what, Gilbert and Sullivan? Iolanthe. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Is that a favorite? Actually, yes, Iolanthe was my favorite. I Iolanthe was the one that, that sort of hooked me on the whole Gilbert and Sullivan-y thing, because when I was about three years old, my Aunt Diane took me to a production of Iolanthe. And it's a very peculiar story in which um, essentially fairies invade the House of Lords and eventually all of the House of Lords sprout wings and fly off with the fairies. <laughs> and I couldn't really understand what lords were for, but I got the fairies all right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right, this is your last clue. Uh, perhaps appropriately for a Neil Gaiman quiz, this, is, this song is known as the Lord Chancellor's Nightmare. Uh, and uh, it's written for an orchestra, and I'm about to play it on the acoustic guitar. <laughs> so even if you get it wrong, people will be distracted by the horrible train wreck that is about to happen. <laughs> Just to make you feel comfortable, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. Here we go. That's really, really nice of you. I'm Just trying to be kind. You're a regular wreck with a crick in your neck And no wonder you snore for your head's on the floor And you have needles and pins from your soles to your shins And your flesh is a creep and your left leg's asleep and you've crap in your toes and a fly in your nose and some fluff in your lung and a feverish tongue and a thirst that's intense in a general sense that you haven't been sleeping in clover but the darkness has passed and it's daylight at last and the night has been long ditto ditto my song and thank goodness that both of them over exactly right It's over. It's over. You did it. Congratulations, Neil Gaiman. I you live. You have won. You live. And does the nice lady get her t-shirt? The nice lady gets yes. it. Yes. Yes, she gets it. Ask me another Anacom t-shirt. Let's hear it for our VIP, Neil Gaiman. I just thought it amusing that they, your, your writers came up with the name Dusk Gardens, <laughs> which is almost impossible to say without hawking on somebody. <laughs> I would never call a book, Dusk Gardens, because <laughs> booksellers gobbed on all over America would be complaining. <laughs>